Well, today I have the pleasure to be here with a lady who was a US Air Force veteran and who is now a certified nutrition specialist. And she special, specializes in using the low carb and ketogenic nutrition to help people reclaim their vitality through eating real and delicious foods. And she shows them that getting well doesn't mean starving or depriving yourself or being at the gym every day. Her motto is real food for real people. And she's an international speaker. She has written many articles uh, and she's also the author of three books. Uh, you can follow her blog on her website uh, or on Twitter. You can watch her videos on YouTube where she talks about keto without the crazy. Welcome to the Keto Podcast, Amy Berger. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So wonderful to have you here today. Um, first, I wanted to start off with, with this crazy uh, um, transition from being a U.S. Air Force um, veteran to, to a nutrition specialist. How did it happen? Um, yeah, not, not a natural progression, but I, I changed careers in my life a few times. I, I had a very hard time finding a job that I really enjoyed and I, I found fulfilling. And um, I joined the military because I felt like I needed a challenge. <laughs> I needed a personal challenge, but I didn't love the military. I'm proud that I did it. But when I got out, I went back to graduate school for nutrition and um, before I joined the military, I was already using a low carb diet for my own weight maintenance. I, I used to be heavier. And the only thing that ever worked, I mean, I, I was exercising all the time, eating what I thought was a healthy diet, and I couldn't lose weight no matter how hard I worked. And I came upon the low carb diet. I actually started with the Atkins diet originally. And so um I was too heavy to join the military. I had to lose weight to even be eligible. So I, that's when I got really, really serious about the strict low carb. Um, I had tried it a little bit before then, but I never really stuck with it. But yeah. after getting out of the military, I just was looking for a career that I would enjoy and you know feel fulfilled by and something that really would just be interesting to me. And I was so passionate about low carb eating and I thought, oh, I, the nutritionist is a career. I could do that. And I could help other people learn about this great, delicious way of eating. So that's, that's where I am now. Okay. <laughs> oh, good to know. And um, well, did you like, like I said just now, you're an international speaker. You've written many, many articles. Um, and you've also written three books. Uh, one of them is The Alzheimer's Antidote. It's also been translated into Dutch. Um, you have recently uh, uh, published another book together with Dr. Eric Westman, uh, And Your Carb Confusion, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. um, but today we are talking about another book you wrote, uh, and that is this one. I hope you can see it. The Stall Slayer. Because this is a very common problem that a lot of people uh, experience when they start doing ketogenic or a low carb diet. At, at first, they start losing weight, that they lose the three, four kilos, for example. Um, and then they, they stall, or even in, in, in some stages of the diet, they stall. Uh, and I really love this book because it's really practical and it uh, takes you through several steps of um, things you can do to solve this. So today I wanted to talk to you about this book and perhaps we can uh, um, yeah, give people some tips on, uh, uh, on how to solve their uh, plateaus. Mm -hmm. um, but first, my first question uh, would be, uh, what is the ketogenic diet in your opinion? Because in, in the Netherlands, uh, ketogenic dietitians use the diet mainly for, for children with epilepsy who don't react well to the, to the medication. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm trying to make clear that there's a difference between this classical medical uh, form of the, of the diet um, and the more yeah, lifestyle type of diet that we're talking about here today. So what, in your opinion, would a ketogenic diet be? Yeah, we were, we were just talking about this before we started recording. I... Um, I use the, the word ketogenic or keto because that's what people search for now, but I prefer to think of it more as low carbohydrate or low carb, because that's really what, what, what gives you the results. What makes the metabolic switch happen is the absence of the carbohydrate. So, and, and that's, that's what's required to shift you from burning mostly carbs and glucose to burning fat and producing ketones. It's, it's the absence of the carbs. And I think when people put emphasis on keto or ketogenic, 
they bring in all of this complication and they worry about, they think they have to have a certain ketone level or they have to drink these ketone products now. And it's, um, I just think it's, it adds this layer of complexity that doesn't need to be there. And it puts people's focus on the wrong thing. The focus yeah. should be on keeping the carbohydrate low, not on hitting any particular ketone level or adding fat to things to make the ratios or the macros. So um, yeah. in, in my opinion, uh, using a ketogenic diet for things like weight loss or type two diabetes or PCOS is, um, well, I, I don't know what, what it's called there, but the polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yeah, yeah, that's, that just needs more of a very low carbohydrate approach versus like a medical ketogenic diet, like you said, for epilepsy or some, some type of very rare genetic, you know, very serious problem. Not that, yeah. not that like weight loss isn't serious or that diabetes isn't serious, but the approach needed is a little bit different, I think. Yes, exactly. Good. Well, it's good to hear it from you as well. Um, and there's a question I always get from people is, uh, um, it's really complicated to be working with all these macros. In your opinion, is that necessary to, to, do, to work with all the complicated macros to, to be able to follow ketogenic diet? No, I don't, I don't think it is. I think the number one most important thing is to keep the carbs low. And then you want to make sure you're getting enough protein. And most women do not eat enough protein, in my opinion. So you want to really target protein. And then you add a little bit of fat for flavor. And we're certainly not afraid of fat, but the macro approach really leads people down the wrong path sometimes because they they think that they're supposed to eat lots and lots of fat to hit that percentage and then they wonder why they stall in weight loss or we've been made for various reasons we've been made afraid of protein people think it's going to spike their insulin or turn into yeah. sugar and biochemically there's some truth there, but that's not something most of us need to worry about on a low carb diet. But so they, they purposely limit protein to keep that percentage at a certain range. They add lots and lots of fat and they don't really get the greatest results with that. So no. <laughs> um, yeah, macros are not necessary. No, exactly. So um, in your book, you talk about uh, well uh, hitting a stall, but when is it really a stall? Is that um, when you've, you've been standing still with your weight loss for, for weeks or weeks or for days. So some people panic even within a few hours <laughs> of not losing any weight. Uh, so so what, how would you define a stall? Yeah, that's a good question because um, especially when you're brand new to this way of eating, you do tend to lose a lot of weight very quickly, but then that slows down and that's totally normal. People yeah. need to understand that it's normal for it to slow down after a little bit. And um, so a, a stall is not just a few days of no weight loss. It's several weeks or months. And it, here's the big thing too. It's not just that your scale weight doesn't change, your size and shape too, because it is, and women have a very, very hard time understanding this. Men, men too, but more yeah. so women. Yeah. It's very, very possible and common in fact, for your size and shape to change, even when your scale weight isn't changing. So you haven't lost any kilos, your scale weight is the same, but you might be smaller. Yeah. Your clothing might be loose on you. So you're not stalled. Just because your scale weight isn't changing doesn't mean that you are stuck because your, yeah. your body is definitely changing. But this is not, if it's only been a week or two and you haven't lost any more weight, that is not a stall. It's Weight loss, it's not a straight line down to the goal. I, I wish, we all wish yeah. it was, but yeah. it's bumpy. You're going to lose a little bit, stay the same for a bit, lose a little bit, gain a little bit. It's going to be a squiggle line, but as long as the trend over time is downward, yeah. then from day to day, you have these little ups and downs, but over the long term, you're moving down. Exactly. That's why I always advise people not only to weigh themselves, but always to also to measure yourself, to measure your waist, see what happens to the, to the, to the, to the size right, there as well. Right. Yeah. Right. And um, so what if there really is a stall that people have been stuck on, on a certain uh, weight or a certain size for, well, in their opinion, too long a time? Um, do you have a couple of tips of what people could do about this? Where should they start? Yeah, it, it always depends on what they're doing now, because the advice I'm going to give someone depends on where they're starting from. But 
in, in the book, the, the two most common things I see that get in the way of weight loss for people are too much carbohydrate. Um, that's just, if, if you're eating too much carbohydrate, your body will not really be able to burn fat as easily. It's too busy burning all the starch and sugar first. Yeah. So it's kind of going to keep that body fat around while it's occupied burning the carbs. So too much carbohydrate. And then like we were saying with the macro issue, too much fat. There is such a thing as too much fat on a ketogenic or low carb diet. You know, just because your carbohydrate intake is low doesn't mean you can eat an unlimited amount of fat. Because if we're eating lots and lots of fat from the outside, then the body has no need to burn all the stored fat instead. No. <laughs> and, and, and some people though, I wanna be clear, some people do get their best results with a very high fat, as, but the carbs are very, very low. But I think more people seem to do better with kind of a moderate fat intake, like not drowning everything in butter and oil and, you know, drinking heavy cream or double cream, whatever they call it there. Um, too, yeah, too much carbohydrate and too much fat are really the two biggest things that I see. And it's, yeah. but that's good because it's so easy to fix that. You just yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> back a little bit like this isn't some huge problem. It's not a big mystery. That's a very easy thing to, to change. Yeah. And in your uh, book, you also talk about uh, several other uh, problems that people can can well, uh, investigate for themselves to see if that's what's what's um, true for them. For example, uh, good night's sleep is very important. So if you're, if you're not rested enough, not uh, relaxed enough, uh, that could also be a problem with, with your weight. Um, one of the other things that I uh, get a lot of questions about is, can I, can I drink alcohol when I'm doing keto? Yeah, so I'm, I'm a wine lover myself. Um, you can consume alcohol, but you have to be strategic about it. You know, alcohol is, as much as I love it, it is empty calories. It's energy with no redeeming nutrition. So, and, and the priority order in which the body burns different energy sources yeah. like carbohydrate, fat, protein, alcohol is number one. So when alcohol is coming into the system, into your body, your body has to metabolize the alcohol before it metabolizes anything else, before right. carbs, before fat. So the more alcohol you consume, the, the further down the priority list burning your body fat becomes. And, um, but that doesn't mean you can't drink. It just means you have to be reasonable about the quantity. And then of course, um, you wanna stick to alcohol that's very low in carbohydrates. So a dry wine, um, distilled spirits. And if you're going to mix them, you want to mix them with a diet soda or some zero sugar mixer. Um, unfortunately, no beer or I mean a light beer, but like in mm -hmm. your country, you have such good beer. I, why would yeah. you drink a light beer there? Oh, so um, <laughs> you can't, but if, yeah. if somebody's really having a hard time losing weight and they're drinking alcohol regularly, that's, um, that's one of the most obvious things to stop. But I, I also know that that's a deal breaker for some people. If you tell someone, well, you do keto, but you can't have alcohol, they're, they're just not gonna do it. So if you're gonna have alcohol, have it, but then think about what do you need to change about the diet? What do you need to change about the food to make room for the alcohol? Yeah, exactly. And I wish I wish that wasn't, I wish yeah. we could just <laughs> drink and drink, but it can't. <laughs> It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and I should say, just in, yeah. in case anybody doesn't know, when you are on a very low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet, your alcohol tolerance is lower. So it's go alcohol is going to affect you much more quickly and much more severely. So yeah. you will not be able to consume the same amount of alcohol that you were in the past when you ate a lot more carbohydrate. It's, it's going to yeah. really hit you. Yes, well, I always tell people you don't need to drink as much to have the fun you, you're used to having with a bit more alcohol. Right. So, right, <laughs> smaller doses, more fun. <laughs> um, and and, and uh, I hear people complaining about when um, uh, they had a little cheat moment or they did have their drink or um, well, they had, they've been to a party or to a wedding and they did have a piece of that cake. Um, and the next morning they get on the scales and say, oh no, I'm, I'm one or two kilos heavier than I was yesterday. I'm, I'm much fatter than, than I was before. 
And what, what's your opinion about that? Is that fat? Yeah, no, this is a great question because um, people get very anxious and very worried about that scale weight. And it is, it is not fat. Um, it's very normal to be up a, a kilo or so the day after you've eaten more carbohydrate. And it really is just your body holding onto water. You know, when we said earlier, when you start a low carb or ketogenic diet, you lose a lot of weight very quickly. That's your body releasing excess water it's holding on to. When we store carbohydrate, we store it as glycogen and glycogen is stored along with water. So for every, I think for every gram of glycogen, we store over two or 2.5 grams of water. So yeah. as you, as your body burns through all that stored carbohydrate, you get rid of all that water. So the weight comes down when you have a higher carbohydrate meal or day, it's just the reverse process. You're going to hang on to some extra glycogen and the water, but yeah. as soon as you get back to back to keto or low carb another day or two, and that'll be gone. But you, people definitely have to understand that they did not gain that much body fat overnight from one piece of cake or from one big no. carb meal. It's just, it's just water. No, because how much would you have to eat to gain one kilo of fat? Exactly. I mean, if you think yeah. what the weight of even the weight of the food you ate wasn't even one kilo of food. No. No. Um, and, and people have to know also, even when you're not cheating or eating a sweet, or even on a normal day when your, your diet is the same all the time, body weight fluctuates naturally anyway. Women, yeah. we, we especially women know with the, with the monthly cycle, but even in men, the humidity can affect water retention, um, sodium consumption from our food. So our weight can vary one or two kilos anyway for no, not for no reason, but for reasons yeah. totally unrelated to what we ate. So it's, this is why like people that weigh themselves every day, it's okay to weigh yourself every day, but you have to understand that it's very normal to have those little fluctuations. It doesn't mean you're gaining fat. No, exactly. And isn't that the same thing that happens when people start with a ketogenic diet? They, they're, they're really dancing around saying, whoop, I, I uh, lost three kilos. I'm really doing well. And then they, they, they stop dropping so much weight so fast. Is that also the water they're losing? Yeah, that is that is mostly water, but I think um, you you have to get rid of that water before you start burning the fat. Anyway, you've got to burn through those stored carbohydrate. Yeah. And I think if seeing that quick early change gives people kind of motivation and that morale boost and the oh, this is like they feel like it's working and it's yeah. I think that's fine. But yeah, and and I I think I mentioned this in in the book. They, they just have to know that that rate of weight loss is not going to continue. Like after maybe the first two or three weeks, it's going to slow down. But when it slows down, that doesn't mean something's wrong. It doesn't mean they need to change something. It's that's they need to expect that it's supposed to slow down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, good to hear that. Um, in your opinion, um, uh, in, in the Netherlands, the, the intermittent fasting is getting really popular. There are intermittent uh, fasting coaches, uh, uh, schedules, uh, apps even. Um, and I hear a lot of uh, good things about the combination of intermittent fasting with a ketogenic diet. In, in your opinion, is, is fasting required to, to, be, to make a success of the diet? I'm, I'm going to answer that in a second, but isn't it funny how, why do we need apps to fast yeah. fasting is to stop eating why why do we have to have technology involved yeah in this process? exactly i agree with you we there need, yeah. we need coaches to like tell us that don't eat for the next 10 hours yeah you need you need to watch that's all okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um so my thought on intermittent fasting really depends on how we define that term because um I, I learned this really from Dr. Westman, my co-author on End Your Carb Confusion. Mm. We don't really, there's no particular eating window or timing that's required. What's required to be successful with this way of eating is a very low carbohydrate intake. And again, not massively overdoing the fat. We, we encourage people to eat only when hungry. So if you're skipping a meal or two, if you're only eating one or two meals per day, because you're just not that hungry, yeah. that's fine. But I don't consider that fasting. I just consider that 
eating when you're hungry and not eating when you're not hungry, which is what all of us should be doing anyway. Yeah, exactly. the, it only seems like fasting because we're so accustomed to eating three meals a day plus snacks. Every time you go anywhere, there's food. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't think anyone really needs to impose any specific hours or timing, but I do think we have to learn to get out of the mindset where, oh, it's breakfast. Like I just woke up, it's breakfast time. Well, if you're not hungry, don't eat first thing in the morning. Or if you're, if you're in an office setting for your work and it's lunchtime and everyone is eating, well, if you're not hungry, don't eat just because no. everyone else is. But I don't consider that fasting. I just consider that following your, your body's yeah. hunger. Um, yes. I think imposing a specific time for your eating can be helpful for the people out there. And there's, there's a lot of, of us, I will count myself included, who have a hard time stopping. We just like to eat all the time, late yeah. at night, any time of day, sometimes for, for the people with... Um, you know, addiction kind of problems or just more trouble moderating, it yeah. can help if they institute a rule. Well, I don't eat after 8 p.m. or whatever, whatever time they decide. Yeah. Yeah. But for the most part, like people fast without even trying, they skip a meal or two because keto is so good for regulating appetite and hunger. But I just don't consider that fasting. I just consider that following your hunger. Yeah. Because I've met people who uh, really desperately are trying to do intermittent fasting, really uh, skip their breakfast, even when they're really hungry and they feel stressed and they feel dizzy and they feel they get bad moods, but they really have to do the intermittent fasting because the app tells them that <laughs> they still have to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good point. I, yeah. I think, you know, there's a lot of very popular people in the keto world or community who unfortunately make hyperbolic statements that scare people and, and people think that there's something harmful if they are, it, it's okay to eat three meals a day. You don't have to do the OMAD, oh, the one meal a day. You don't have to eat only within an eight hour window. It's okay to do this any way that works for you. And I think that's, um, that's kind of unfortunate that the very influential people make blanket statements that don't apply to everybody, but every, everybody thinks they, they have to do yeah. that and they, they don't. No, it's still a very individual advice, I think, very, right. thing to do, especially yeah. in, in women uh, with, with their, their, their monthly cycles. Um, after um, well, a night where you haven't slept very well, for example, or after stressful events, when, you're, when your cortisol is high, when you're stressed uh, already as you are, uh, and if you add any stress um, uh, to that by not eating, it only adds up to it. And it only makes you more hungry and more, well, not in control, I think. Yeah, I think, I think that that can backfire in, in women probably more so than men. But um, if you restrict too much, then you wonder why it's 11 p.m. and you've got your face in the refrigerator. Yeah. You know, I think, I think women have become afraid, afraid to eat, frankly, yeah. afraid to eat. And the keto, some people in the keto world have contributed to that. Yeah. Exactly. So we need to go back to feeling our, our bodies, feeling what we need ourselves instead of following rules by people who are diff different from you. Yeah. And I just, I just think most of, most of what anyone is saying is not wrong. It just may not apply to your particular situation. So like we were saying earlier, people use very, very strict ketogenic diets for epilepsy. Yeah. That kind of approach is not wrong. It just no. is very unique to a specific situation. That approach is not the same that's going to work for weight loss in a postmenopausal woman, you know, and, uh, you know, somebody, it just, all of this advice is correct for somebody. It's just not correct for everybody, right? No, exactly. Yeah. No, so people have to listen to, to listen to their own bodies and start feeling what they need again. Um, when I was going through your book, I found a, a specific chapter on thyroid issues. And I get a lot of questions about that because uh, still people seem to think that when you have a, a, a slowly a slow working thyroid, uh, that you cannot start a ketogenic diet, you, can, you cannot start cutting the carbs because that should be bad for your thyroid. How, how, what, what, should, what do you think about that? Um, 
it's this is a very individual thing. I think a lot of people with pre-existing thyroid conditions start keto and find they actually do better. They can actually, if they're on thyroid medicine, they can actually reduce it and some can even stop it altogether. Um, that tends to be more true of people with Hashimoto's disease, which is the autoimmune thyroid yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, people have thyroid issues for all kinds of other reasons that are not Hashimoto's. I don't think, I think a ketogenic or low carb diet is fine for people with thyroid issues, but if you have, I'm actually writing, my next book is thyroid <laughs> and oh, good. Um, it's not yeah. about keto at all. It's going to be just thyroid. Yeah. The, if, if you have a thyroid problem, and I mean, specifically low, if hyper, the overactive thyroid, you actually tend to be underweight. You're, you lose yeah. weight without even trying. Yeah. So we're talking mostly about low thyroid and keto does not fix that magically for everybody. And if if your thyroid hormones are not really optimized for, for you, it's going to be really hard to lose weight no matter what you do, even if you're very disciplined with the diet. Um, it'll, it'll help a little bit, like you'll, you'll do okay, but you're not going to get the, the big results with weight loss that you would get until those hormones are optimized. Now you're, I don't know what, what the, um, conventional treatment is in the Netherlands, but in, in Europe, like the European union in general, I think yeah. is a lot more friendly to the natural desiccated thyroid gland or, um, the other, you can combine yeah. two kinds of thyroid hormone medication that in the U S doctors are very reluctant and it's really hard to get a doctor to prescribe the best medicine here. But I think in Europe, they're a lot more open to the, um, I don't want to call it unconventional because I don't think it is, but they're, they're more yeah. open to that more effective approach. But still, I hear a lot of, especially women who struggle with their, with their uh, thyroid medication. Um, it is still difficult. I yeah. just think it's, it's easier to get the medicine in Europe, but it's still difficult. And I, I will say, I mean, if, if people, people can get the book, there's a whole chapter on thyroid. But if you have a thyroid problem weight gain or, or difficulty losing weight is probably not going to be the only issue you have. You would have a lot of yeah. other symptoms that indicate this issue. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Usually it's like, like a, a combined picture of, of, of several factors right. that, are, that are going wrong in the body. Yeah. yeah. So um, if there is somebody listening now and thinking, well, I'm, I'm overweight, I'm tired, I have thyroid issues, what would be the first step? Would it be the, uh, um, do you have any advice for them? Well, if they're not already doing keto, I would do it because that alone might help. Yeah. That alone might really give you your energy back, get the weight moving. But if, you, if you're already doing it and you've already done the troubleshooting with, like we said earlier, your carbohydrate intake, the fat, like make sure that you're doing this way of eating properly and not just incorporating a hundred different things that you've heard on the internet, like make sure you you're really doing it properly. Um, if, if you're already doing it really correctly and you still have these thyroid problems, then you definitely want to work with a doctor. It's just, um, again, I don't know how difficult it is over there, but yeah, it, the doctors very often won't even order the necessary tests. There's one or two tests right. that are, that are ordered most commonly here when you really need five or six, there's a panel of thyroid hormones that need to be tested because they look at the one or two. Yeah. And if those are normal, they just say, oh, you don't have a thyroid problem, goodbye. You know, you, you need yeah. to eat less and move more. But if they were to dig deeper and order those extra other tests, you'll see right away that there's an issue. Yes. So that, but it's, it can just be very hard to find a doctor who really understands that. Yeah. Um, that's, but that's, unfortunately, that's the answer. If you need, because if you need the medication to replace the hormones, at least, I mean, in the U S you, you need a prescription. You can't just yeah. go to the store and buy that. Yeah, so, here. um, yeah, I, it, it is a very difficult battle sometimes, unfortunately. Yeah. I, yeah. That's complex as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, at least you're, you're saying, um, that it's not impossible to lose weight when you're having thyroid issues on a ketogenic diet, because that's what uh, sometimes is advised here. That it's not possible to lose weight or cut the carbs when you have a slow thyroid. So I'm glad we cleared that up. 
It's, um, yeah, but, I mean, but yeah. it, it's a struggle. Like it's, it, yeah. it is a struggle. And I don't, I mean, I, because I have, I have low thyroid myself, so I, I don't want to abandon these women. You yeah. can lose weight, but you might reach a point where you're not going to get any further until you get that medication. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, one final question, because I always uh, also found a chapter on exercise. Um, because many, many people have this, this crazy idea that they have to do a lot of works at workouts and run like crazy all the time to, just to lose weight and to get their metabolize, uh, t- metabolism going. And uh, well, what's your opinion on that? Um, I think it's my, my opinion, but also my own personal experience and the personal experience of like millions of people exactly. that um, exercise yeah. is not that great for weight loss. I think there's lots of other reasons to exercise. I mean, mental health, it's a very good natural antidepressant, um, mobility, just strength, cardio, cardio respiratory fitness. Like there's a lot, exercise is excellent for health. It's just not a very effective weight loss tool. So I, I mean, I spent years and years just trying to work out more and more and more and like not getting any, literally and figuratively on the treadmill, not getting anywhere, <laughs> running in place. <laughs> and um, yeah. so I don't, I don't want to discourage exercise, but you can lose weight and ma- radically, massively improve your health with a low carb diet without any exercise, because there's, if, what if you're disabled in some way and you can't exercise, you can't do certain things, yeah. you can still absolutely thrive on a low carb diet. I know a lot of the keto you know, doctors that we all know have patients in wheelchairs or who are is- disabled in some way. They, they can't run, they can't you know, do sprints or they can't lift weights, but right. they can still reverse their diabetes. They can lose 50, 100 kilos. You know? So it's, um, I don't, for those who can exercise and who enjoy it, I absolutely encourage it. But if you can't exercise, don't feel like there's no hope for you or this isn't going to work. It absolutely will. Yeah. And can you also exercise too much? Oh, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up because no yeah. one ever talked about, you know, it's, it's like anything. Just because some is good doesn't mean more and more and more is better. You can exercise too much, especially if you could, women, if you're not eating enough, you're, you're demanding too much of your body without resting and, and replenishing the nourishment that you need. Um, and that, like you said, the stress to put your body under even that amount of stress all the time, if you're not, if you're not resting adequately, um, that's all I can really say. Just because some is good doesn't mean more is better. And, and there, there is such a thing as exercise addiction. There yeah. really is. I think there's people who have an unhealthy relationship with with over exercising. I mean, that's rare, but it does exist. It does exist. Yes, yes. And too much exercising for some people can even be counterproductive. It can it can uh, raise their stress, raise their cortisol, and they can even get a, a disbalance in their in their um, their glucose uh, metabolism. Yeah, and you so, you'll even yeah. notice you might you might even start to gain body fat despite all the exercise because of yeah. the hormonal effects of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Good to hear it from you as well. Um, well, this book, I, I found this book really helpful. It's not available in Dutch, only in, in English, but uh, it's not very uh, complex uh, English language. It's, it's very uh, understandable, even if you're, uh, you don't speak English brilliantly, like me. Well, <laughs> I'm trying. Um, you're, fa- you're fabulous. You're completely fluent. <laughs> I know. I think oh, your English well. is perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so if, if, um, if this triggers uh, some kind of interest in you and you're listening to this and you think, wow, this book is really great. What's it called? It's called The Stall Slayer by Amy Berger. Um, I think it's still available in the, in the Dutch uh, bookshops as well or online. So if you, you can, I don't know if, um, I think it's print on demand so you can get it from your Amazon and they'll, they'll send you that yeah. paperback you have, or you can download a PDF from stallslayer.com. Oh. You can download electronic version. Good. I'll, I'll put the, the link uh, underneath the, in the show notes. Um, well, this, these were all the questions I had for, for now. Um, we'll be meeting you, this, just like we said before, before we started recording this podcast. You'll be here in June for the Ancestral Health Symposium, and you'll be talking mm-hmm. about a different topic, but about the um, uh, neurological diseases and ketogenic therapies to, 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 for that. Um, so if there are people uh, listening now thinking, wow, I really want to meet Amy Berger, I, want to really, I really want to hear her speak, or one of the other fantastic speakers that day, there are still tickets available, I'll put the, the link in the show notes. 
um and well and can i can i can i advertise sure. one little thing yes of course so um i work i work with dr westman um doing online courses about keto we yeah. have our Keto Made Simple Masterclass coming up in April. It'll be our sixth round, I think. We've had five wow. rounds already. Yeah. People get really incredible results. So if you've been doing keto and you're struggling, you're not getting the results you want, you feel very overwhelmed, check out our Keto Made Simple Masterclass. Yeah. It's at... Um, it's a very long website, adaptyourlifeacademy.com adaptyourlifeacademy.com. Yes. You'll see the keto course, but this is a video. Anywhere. You can do it from anywhere in the world. So international, like, I mean, if you speak English, it's no problem. Yeah. It's video lessons taught by Dr. Westman himself. And he very, very down to earth, simple approach to keto, yeah. very effective. So if you feel like you're very um, frustrated and disappointed because you're not getting where you want to go, I check out that keto made simple course. Wonderful. I'll put the link down in the show notes as well. Show notes as well so people can find you there. Wonderful. And Dr. And we've, Eric Westman. We've had students from all over the world. So yeah. Netherlands yeah. is no problem. Yeah, sure. No, great. And uh, Dr. Eric Westman will also be here in June uh, together with uh, Professor Noakes and Gary, Gary Taubes. And some, uh, we have the Dr. Ivo Seipkens and Fritz Muskiet. Um, so it's going to be a wonderful day. This is an unprecedented lineup for the Netherlands. So this is going to be absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Uh, well, thank you so much for, for your time today. Um, looking forward to meeting you in June. And, uh, and we'll talk then. Thank you very much. Same. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye bye. Leuk dat je luisterde naar deze aflevering van de Keto Podcast. Ik hoop dat het je heeft geïnspireerd, vragen heeft beantwoord of juist vragen heeft opgeroepen. Heb je vragen of wil je reageren op deze podcast? Stuur dan een e-mail naar info.deketopodcast.nl De Keto Podcast is ook te vinden op Facebook, Instagram en Twitter. Vind je deze podcast waardevol, dan zou je me enorm helpen door een mooie review achter te laten en met 5 sterren te waarderen. En wil je geen aflevering meer missen? Abonneer je dan. Deze podcast wordt mogelijk gemaakt door Ketogenics Institute. Keto Channings Institute verzorgt cursussen voor gezondheidsprofessionals over ketogene leefstijl en therapie. En voor een ieder die zelf met een ketogene leefstijl wil starten, is er het Keto Leefstijl Programma. Meer informatie is te vinden op www.ketogenicsinstitute.com Mijn naam is Louisette Blikkenhorst. Bedankt voor het luisteren en tot de volgende keer.